Stepney got on well with the other engines and tried to make himself useful wherever he went. Plenty of work to go around, he would say. Trucks to shunt, coaches to arrange, trips up and down the branch lines. It'll be a shame to let you have all the fun while I'm stuck just doing special tourist trains. Every afternoon, Stepney would haul one of these special trains to a different branch line. His coaches were of a type called saloons, with wide windows on each side so that passengers could get a great view no matter where they looked. The train stopped for a supper and tour of the yards, with plenty of photographs next to the Bluebell engine or whoever happened to be around. Of all the engines on Thomas's branch line, Daisy was by far the snootiest, though she had thankfully begun to learn some sense thanks to Toby's patient lessons. She prided herself on her more modern service and couldn't see what all the fuss was about. Imagine making a spectacle of yourself, she flounced to Percy. Blow and smoke all about and make it harder for us to work around his specials. There's plenty of your steam engines about. If I didn't know any better, said Percy with a sly grin, I say you were jealous. Not the prettiest flower in the garden anymore, eh, Daisy? What? Me? Jealous? sniffed Daisy. He's as bad as Thomas with all the showing off he does. He's got spirit replied Percy, but he's grateful to be working at all. The other railway had him on the scrap lines not too long ago. A dreadful place to think about. Daisy's haughty expression softened, but only a little. Well, maybe so, but he couldn't do with turning it down. One afternoon, Stepney came up the branch line as usual with his special. The yard had been tidy to allow him to park his empty saloons in a siding while his passengers had their supper and he could fill up on coal and water. When Daisy arrived at the platform with her up train he was happily dozing but gave a happy whistle at her approach. Daisy ignored him. She went to refill at the oil tank, which cleared the platform for Stepney's return journey to the big station. Usually Percy would help Shanti's train, but when he arrived at the saloon siding, he found the signalman and station master looking anxiously at the points. Jammed at the worst possible time, he explained to Percy and his crew. The saloons can't come out of the siding, and we don't have other coaches available until Thomas comes with Annie and Clarabelle, but they can't come up until Stepney clears their line at Ellsbridge. Could Bertie or one of the other buses help get the passengers home then? asked Percy's driver. The signalman shook his head. Traffic accident in town. A farmer's lorry broke down on the level crossing, so that rules out both him and Toby coming to the rescue. Percy gave a frustrated huff of steam. Botheration! And I need Toby's stone trucks to get down to the harbour. Whatever next? Stepney looked thoughtful. Well, if we can't use the saloons, what about something else? Maybe a brake van? Not enough room for all your passengers, replied the station master. What about me, sir? called a voice. All eyes turned to Daisy at the oil depot. My next train isn't for another hour and a half she offered. If Stepney and I hurry, I can be back up the line to take while you sort out the level crossing. Stepney grinned broadly. A splendid idea, Miss Daisy. I don't mind a quick run if you're up for it. Daisy, flattered at his manners, didn't even give a word of complaint when he backed down in front of her. His passengers, interested at the unusual train formation, quickly began taking photographs until they were tactfully shooed to their seats by the guard. <whistles> he 
In the end, the two engines working together managed to make their connection on time, and things were soon quickly sorted out for the other trains to run as scheduled. The following morning, Stepney met Daisy at the junction. You were clever yesterday, he complimented. My passengers had a grand time travelling with you. I hope my showing off for the cameras yesterday didn't offend you. Daisy coughed awkwardly, but Stepney simply grinned. No hard feelings, he said simply. You're really lucky to work on such a wonderful branch line. I miss the ones I used to work on the other railway sometimes, but yours beat them all hollow. You'd be a real asset on my Bluebell line. Do you really think so? asked Daisy, perky up a bit. Absolutely, laughed Stepney. You'd be the only Daisy in our railway bouquet of names. And he proceeded to tell her all about the other engines who helped run his line. 